Hello everyone, good day. Welcome again to our course, Sci 101 Introduction to Psychology. So for this um, week's lesson, we're going to discuss about the motivation and emotion. So these two are more are two uh, important aspects for us to discuss, no? Because um, these are the things that um, we are experiencing every day, and uh, also uh, one of uh, the key elements of us continuing our lives to be better every day so first uh, let's discuss the motivation so when we are thinking about motivation uh, we're always looking at the question what drives you to do when what are the driving force that makes you, you know, do something uh, be with something or what uh, or which um, gives you the reason no? to do, to feel, and to act accordingly. Now, when we're talking motivation about motiv motivation, we're uh, referring to something that represents no? or variables that affect behavior and which are not uh, from the external environment. So it is somehow internal, but sometimes there are two types actually of motivation, and these are... Um, external and internal and sometimes it is intrinsic and extrinsic also it describes uh, an organism's actions where these actions are determined in part by the organism's enduring nature as well as its momentary um, internal state so at this point um, it uh, also uh, no, no, uh, provides no, uh, reason no, behind some, someone's action and also, it described as the process of uh, jumpstart or goal oriented, oriented, no. And even in every thing we do, no, there is always a reason behind it, and it is a jumpstart or we, uh, we call it a springboard for us to um, act, no, and react in certain situation. And also, it is somehow driven by our emotions. Or to simply put, no. Um, motivation means that which produces action. So, again, it is the driving force. It is the force within or the force which makes us move into something or to do something. Now, the importance of motivation is that uh, it improves no? It improves one's condition in life. Like, for example, uh, we are somehow... Um, Sometimes we're not willing to do something, but because of motivation or the reason behind for us to do so, it gives us meaning, no? or it drives us to do it for us to be better in life. No? And the possibilities of improving one's life, living conditions are actually endless. And if the person is just motivated enough, it will really happen. Like for example, what drives you to study? No? What makes you study psychology? So, the reason there is your driving force. And it could be your uh, motivation. or it, it could be the reason why you're doing this and that. Why are you studying? Because in the future, sometimes you're going to achieve your goal. You know? So, uh, when we say motivation, it is somehow teleological, no? Because you're looking for something in the future, and when you are looking at it, you are, drad, uh, no, uh, you are uh, shaped in the present, no, on what to do for you to achieve the future or your goal. And also, um, some theories believe that uh, motivation has an effect on how a person acts or behaves. That learned behavior will not show itself. Unless there is a force or energy within compels it to move. So, ayan. So, there are components that uh, gives us motives. Or these are the components of motives. So, it starts with the need, preceded with um, drive, next the response, and the last one is the goal. So, to understand the process, more researchers look uh, into the dynamics in which actions are initiated, sustained, directed and terminated and that's according to Franken in 2007. So the motivational cycle can be presented in the following diagram which uh, you can see in our slide. No? 
where uh, I mentioned earlier, it starts with the need. What's the purpose? Uh, why are you doing this? Because you need to do this. It is something that I have to do. And what makes you that something to do? And that is the drive. And when you are driven by a certain, no, a certain reason, then it you will respond to the drive itself. And that's when you are doing something. And when you responded to it, it leads to the goal. So that's why it's the process of need, drive, response, and goal. <clears throat> now, the classification of motives can be um, differentiated, no? or can be classified into two types. And these are physiological and psychological. So in physiological, it can arise from bodily needs, no? a physical, and determined by the biological process of the person, and also essential for survival between life and death. No? Uh, for example, just like your drive to eat, no? you're hungry because that's the reaction of your body, and it needs you to eat. That's why you are... Um, eating and you're craving for something that you want to eat and also that's uh, somehow no life in that situation because you can, if you could do that eat then you will die and if you're going to eat then you will have a good feeling and a healthy lifestyle next these needs are might be no like, like i have mentioned earlier hunger also thirst breathable air no? maintaining normal temperature sleep and avoiding pain and elimination of toxins and also, when satisfied, motives are exterminated. No? So when you're satisfied, then the motives will be exterminated because it will satisfy and it will just go away. No? Because, of course, you want less like when you're hungry. But when you're full, no? your, uh, you will, your appetite to eat, again, to eat further will stop eh? because you are already full. No? And sometimes your thirst, no? when you drink, it will quench your thirst and then it will, um, I know, your motive to drink will already disperse. Next, <clears throat> psychological aspect. And this is one of the classification of our motives. And when we say psychological, it arises from a person's relationship. No? Some of these motives are altruism, success, prestige, power, self-expression, and affiliation. So, it is somehow um, related also to the hierarchy of needs of Abraham Maslow. No? If we're going to look at his um, uh, hierarchy of needs, uh, somehow, no, after the physical will be, um, the physiological needs are met, it will rise into the psychological and until, up until, we're going to um, reach the self-actualization. So, the motive does not disappear despite the satisfaction of a need. Because if it is psychological, once you met it, you will somehow look for some more. No? You will improve. No? You will uh, look for improvement in your um, motives. And that's why there's, there, here comes the um, struggle between. No? If the person or, or the logic between or the logic of um, if the person does really have satisfaction or contentment. No? Dito na yan siya na issue na pumapasok. Now, if we're going to uh, look at it one by one, uh, physiological needs, no? of course, in, in, these are the hunger, thirst, breathable air and sleep, and maintaining normal temperature, avoiding pain, the drive to eliminate body waste. So if we look at it, um, hunger is activated by hunger drive. And when blood, sugar, glucose levels go down, it uh, needs you to uh, makes you need to eat because you really need no to eat because of the substances that you are looking for and also there's a needs no body body losses more than a quart of water every day and when the water level is insufficient of course you will be thirsty and this is uh, gives you a drive of thirst breathable air no it is a uh, need of the person to <clears throat> uh, breathe to to uh, intake the oxygen, no? and uh, these are very essential to the uh, processes in the body of a person. And also sleep, need, uh, for example, six to eight hours, that's why uh, uh, if you're lacking sleep, no? it also um, affects our mood, no? emotions, and uh, really need this because 
uh, this is essential also to the balance of the lifestyle of a person. So also maintaining normal temperature, is an effort done regardless of homeostasis, no? Kasi our body is um, again adjusting to the temperature of the environment. However, uh, we we'll have to consider also that uh, we must put an effort for us to make it uh, really balanced, no? Like just for example, no, the in the process of homeostasis, uh, or we are sweating as a person because that is the normal um, or the regular aircon of our body, which cools down our body, right? But sometimes we don't want to sweat, that's why we put some of the efforts like turning an electric fan or an aircon for us to cool down our body. Also avoiding pain, no? We really don't like pain, of course, but it is already an abnormality when you really like pain, no? And um, where the, the, here the pain receptors are spread all over the body and uh, the sensation itself serves a warning device, no? From impending harm, of course, a uh, person doesn't want uh, pain unless experiencing a uh, disorder. So now, the last one is the drive to eliminate body waste. And that's why we are um, exterminating no, body waste. And mostly, and normally, we do it every day. But sometimes to other person, depending on their metabolism, sometimes it changes uh, person to person. So that's uh, where we say that we are urinating and uh, having our bowel. Okay? Next, for the psychological needs, um, we have here the altruism, selfishness, or yeah, selflessness, and this behavior carried out uh, to benefit no? another without anticipation of rewards or external resources. So this being uh, unconditional. And also achievement, no? uh, concern over competition and the desire to live up a standard of excellence. And that's how you set your goals, like. Right? Um, you want to have a perfect score. That's why you study. No, that that's one of your motiva motives. No, and it motivates you. It drives you to study because you wanted a high score or a high grade. Okay, and also for example, why is that you're studying? Because you want to achieve something in the future. Like you want to be a psychologist, a psychometrician, and also you're studying in uh, in the field of psychology because you want to um, be uh, in the field of psychology no matter or regardless to what uh, you want to be in the future. Next, affiliation. Desire to be with other people and share one's interests, satisfying social relationships, need of belongingness. And this also belongs, some, oh, if we're going to review and go back to the hierarchy of needs of Abraham Maslow, no? there is there the need, need for belongingness and safety and security. And this is where uh, affiliation goes on. So now, uh, let's move on to the theories of motivation and I'm going to present to you here the uh, hierarchy of needs of Maslow. So the first one is the physiological needs and uh, the air, the water, the food, no? the shelter, the sleep, clothing, and the production are here. Next, safety needs and the personal security, employment, resources, health, and property. And no? if you're going to realize it in the real reality of life, these are really actually the hierarchy of our needs. And next are the beloved belonging, belonging needs, no? <clears throat> the friendship, intimacy, family, no? series of connection. That's why we are affiliated with different clubs, organizations, with other people, no? uh, with our, uh, we are sharing the same goals and aspirations. And next, the esteem needs. These are the respect, esteem, status, recognition, strength, and freedom and the last one is the self-actualization where it is the desire to become the most that one can be so, yeah. so also there is the instinct um, theory where uh, it proposes that all organisms are born with natural tendencies to help them survive no and uh, instincts are goal-oriented behaviors and that that these acts are natural rather than a result of learning or experience and also humans also have these instinct behaviors one of these is the rooting reflex where the infant instantly seeks out uh, his uh, mother's nipple and suck to it so with our instincts sometimes we are moving towards something that we really need and want and next the need theory it's proposed by uh, david mcclellan actually is uh, always been uh, uh, written no? or maybe we call this um, being um, um, 
put into reference when you're talking about motivation. No? Kasi even in my in uh, in the researches about motivation in the related related literature, we are writing no uh, uh writings and uh, works. And he proposed here that um, that this theory is a motivation no? model that seeks to describe how achievement, power, and affiliation needs affect a person's behavior. And these are related to our motivation or our motives. No? Achievement, power, and affiliation. So, if we're going to <clears throat> discuss it one by one, no? the next slide. The need for achievement refers here the achievement motivated wants you to master a task or situation motivated by accomplishment. No? You're motivated to achieving something, to accomplish something. No? And that's the need for achievement. Next, the need for affiliation. The friendly relationships of interactions need to be liked or accepted or more likely to be cooperated by a team player. So, it is more likely to be with each or with the other individuals to be accepted and to be loved. And that's for belongingness. And also for the need of power, personal and institutional. No? Like, uh, in personal, no? wants to control others and for institutional, wants to achieve higher goals. So, also, if we're going to look at the psychoanalytic theory of Freud, Freud postulated that humans have two basic needs and these are Eros and Thanatos. No? Uh, according to his theory, no? The eros is the life drive. No, for us to live, we must love. And thanatos, the death drive, for us to look forward on impending death. And everything a person does, as well as his thoughts and emotions, are driven by either one of the two goals. And his drive works to help the person survive or prevent his or her own destruction. And Freud believed that human person's knowledge about uh, these drives. Uh, for the most part, is buried in the unconscious. No? Next, <clears throat> Eros is the drive for life, no? to live a life in abundance, and Thanatos is the need to be protected against the disappointments or prevail over life's frustrations. No? And thus, psychoanalytic theory proposes that people to go to school, it could help one's survival in terms of the possibility of financial stability, uh, having enough money uh, for healthcare and even improved probability of finding a spouse. And that's Eros. And uh, same manner, people demanded safety, security, and justice, and that is Thanatos. That's because, again, Eros is a drive to live and uh, Thanatos, the death drive. And somehow we are looking at it because, the, even in philosophy, we are looking at our impending death as human being. So we are in need of. Uh, safety, security, and justice. So, I guess that's it. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, please do um, browse the reading materials provided below and also see you in our next um, topic which is emotions.